Okay, so yesterday we covered uh, quite a bit of uh, chapter 13 up to section 4, which is this now. Uh, and that deals with motion transmission systems. Yesterday we saw the three types of motion. There's actually many types of motions, but your book only covers three types of motions, uh, which is translation, rotation, and helical. Now we're looking at systems of motion or motion transmission. Now first off, a definition. Uh, motion transmission is what? It's basically having two objects connected together that you would like to move in the same direction, opposite direction, or even completely perpendicular. But you don't want to change their nature. Now, I'm going to show you this after. It's a little nifty uh, flash animation that covers quite a bit. And I invite you guys to go to it at one point uh, to sort of uh, explore it. But I'll show it to you guys after. Now, um, types or types of components in a mechanical system. So what is a driver component? What is a driven component? And what the hell is an intermediate component? Can you tell me? Say what? No, I'm not going to say it again. Once is enough. OK. I don't know. I got a lovely voice. I can crack and go low. OK, so what is a driver component? Okay, You have three things, a driver, driven, or sometimes you even have an intermediate. You're not always three things. You can have two things also. So obviously, you know, it goes without saying a driver is something that performs the task or a component that receives the force required to activate the system. The driven component receives that force, so that force is transmitted or transferred to it. And sometimes you can have an intermediate component which is located between the driver and the driven, and not all systems contain intermediate components. Sometimes you can have just two gears connected to each other, and that's good enough. Oh, I'm going to leave that. I'll say it again. So in layman's words, the driver component is the thing, is part of the system that receives force from you and activates the system. Uh, the driven basically receives the force from the driver. There's a transfer of motion from the driver to the driven. And sometimes you have an intermediate, you have a third part in the middle. And that basically acts as a link between the driver and the driven. Not all systems have that. Okay, We're going to see gear trains later. Uh, intermediate could be a chain, it could be another gear, it could be a belt, uh, etc. So we're going to look at some examples. Now here, this is a little, uh, oops, sorry, uh, before we get to that, let's look at this picture. Is a bike is probably the best example of a uh, motion transmission system. Yes, Nigel. The driver is part of the system that you give force to it, you, whether electrical or your own body or you know heat or whatever, and that activates the system. Okay? And then it gets transferred onto intermediate and on from intermediate onto the driven. But sometimes you don't have intermediate. Now in the bike example, you are the force that's, uh, that's powering this whole system. So you start pedaling. Now, when you pedal, there's that, that uh, pedal and the gear, the big gear connected to it. So these guys are the drivers now. An intermediate would be the chain in this case, like Sean said before. And that chain links the big gear in the front onto the back gear in the back, obviously. And that's what moves the back wheels. So this is an example of a motion transmission system where a set components perform the function of transmitting motion. Now, uh, characteristics of motion in transmission systems. So can you name me some examples from last year that you guys saw? Some properties of motion transmission systems. Any volunteers? Brave. Angelus. Oh, you give me examples. No, no, I want the... Uh, oh, yeah, that's, that's fine. That's what I'm asking for, actually. Examples. So belt and, belt and pulley, worm and gear. What else? Worm and worm? No, that doesn't exist. Worm gear, belt and pulley, that's two. What else? Chain and sprocket. Chain and sprocket. A? No, that it is worm gear. Okay. Uh, no. No. Let's no no, you don't have to. It's all there. So gear trains, where it is a combination of many gears, chain and sprocket systems. Worm and worm gear systems. Uh, you guys are thinking worm and worm, but it's worm and worm gear systems. Uh, friction gear systems and belt and pulley systems. So it's a little. Uh, oops, no, not yet. I keep thinking, but it's not. 
So, you got these two gears. When you put them together, do you guys agree that they're going to rotate opposite each other? Why? First off, do you agree or do you not agree? Do you agree that they... Uh, so you do agree that they're going to rotate oppositely, right? Now, why? I think it's pretty obvious. Yeah, it's pretty obvious to look at. One is rotating clockwise, it's going to clock counterclockwise. But if you put a third one, and if you look at all all of these animations, if you put a third one, you can make the driver and the driven behave the same way. And if you look at a couple of examples on the board, a lot of you are not looking at the board, you're looking at your screens. Oh, you're missing all the animations. Uh, too much animation is too much for your brain, right? Okay. So, if you look at this uh, example here, the bottom uh, left, and I should point at it with my pointer, right here. There, let's say that this is the uh, driver. The one on top is the driver. And the last one is the driven. So, notice that they're both rotating the same way. And this is one way of having the driver and the driven component of a system go in the same direction. It's by adding that third one. Now, what else you see is that you also see a gears of different sizes, and that makes a big, big difference. If you're, trying to, if you're looking for speed, or if you're looking for torque, you need different combinations. Now, if you're looking for speed, let me ask you, ask you this, this is a logic question. If I'm looking for a speedy system, should my driver be bigger than my driven or smaller? Don't, don't be impulsive, think about it. I'm going to ask, ask the question again. If I'm looking for speed, a speedy system, should my driver be bigger than my driven or smaller than my driven? John. Ew. <laughs> the smaller one's going faster and, and the bigger one's going slow in the end. So you want a big gear that makes the smaller gear go much faster. Okay. The other way, what you just said, is torque. And that's what you're looking at power. If you're looking at power in your system, you would put torque. Torque forces things to move. It's not speedy, it just gives, puts a lot of power when you want to turn things around. Now this is cool. Now I'm making this move right now with my mouse. You've got a combination. How many uh, systems do you see here? Show of hands. Show of hands. Don't call out. How many systems do you see? I'm making a move, by the way. Yeah, my hand. My hand's making a move. How many systems do you see? Show of hands. Don't call out. Daniel? Um, no. Oh. Okay, how about how many types of motion systems do you see? It's only two. Angela's right. It's only two. There's a... No, no, that's not a belt plate. You've got a you've got a gear train going on here. See, I can't point. I can't point. So you've got a gear train going on here, and you've got a a worm and a worm gear system going on here. Okay. So actually, um, uh, I'm sorry, that's that's wrong. That's not a worm and gear. That's actually a rack and pinion. Okay. Uh, worm and worm gear is is helical, whereas this one is going translation. So that's a rack and pinion. So you've got two systems going on. Now. Do you guys notice this bold line here and this other bold line here? They do this to sort of help you count the number of rotations per minute that a gear performs. Because this is the only math you'll be seeing in this chapter. How you can determine the speed of a gear based on the ratio of teeth. And not just teeth, but also ba based on the ratio of diameter for both gears. And we're going to see a bit of this math later on. So, oops, okay, too many animations. Now, reversibility and irreversibility. People always have a hard time uh, seeing if something is reversible or not, okay? Now, I'm going to just step outside from this for a second. I'm going to show you a little video. Excuse me. Actually, it's just too slow. So I'll show you a little video. Uh, so 
This part is slow. Okay, here we go. second. You're so slow. Okay, so what you're seeing here, why do I have this running twice? Okay, so what you're seeing here, this is a, Mrs. Sebastian and I visited a sister school of ours, a private school, and uh, uh, they had a great setup for, um, uh, different types of motion transmission systems and just to give you some examples so basically I'm giving you a, uh, uh, an appetizer of what you're going to see in terms of motion transmission systems so you're looking here at a gear train there here you're looking at a um, uh, chain and sprocket. I made a mistake. I called it a gear train, but it's a chain and sprocket, but with a uh, rubber belt. Okay, not a metallic chain. Hey, okay. sorry, I didn't hear you. Uh, they made them from scratch, and uh, I thought maybe it would be cool actually if we make some of these. Uh, I'll mention that later on to you. Okay. Another gear train. This is a. Uh, this is different because the other one had big to big. This one is small to big. Uh, bevel gear. Now, bevel gear. Cool thing about it is that it transfers motion from what from horizontal to vertical. Uh, this is just a regular chain and sprocket. And uh, finally, uh, worm gear system. Now I showed worm gear, I showed you both arrows for the bottom one because there it's helical motion. And uh, this is just a copier that they were looking at. Okay, so let's go back to uh, where we were. So in terms of uh, reversibility, uh, when I say to you something is reversible or reversible, meaning you can go back or forth, right? Now in this case, uh, you have to really understand that this gear train system is reversible. It can go back or forth. There's nothing stopping you. Now, uh, it alternates from one gear onto another. The uh, next system uh, is a gear train, uh, sorry, a chain and sprocket system. This one is also reversible. You can go backwards or forwards. Uh, now, the this depends on the configuration. It's identical only for sprocket touching the side chain of uh, the, the same side of the chain. So if you look at this one, these two guys are going both, all three of them inside are going both the same direction, whereas this one here on the outside is going the opposite direction. So, worth mentioning. Is it reversible? Yes, we said that before. Uh, worm and worm gear system. Now, this one is not reversible. Can you tell me why it's not reversible? If you look at the image, why is this not reversible? Show of hands, don't call out. Daniel? Yeah, it's precisely that. Thanks, Daniel. It's because these teeth are at an angle. There is not much leeway for you to go backwards. It can only go forward. Now, some of you may say, well, this is useless, sir. Why, why, where would you want to use a system like that? Actually, it could also be an advantage that it does only go in one direction. 
So here it varies the direction of the threads on the worm screw shaft. So these things here that are at an angle, don't forget that they're called threads in which you saw last year. And notice also these gears are still going in the opposite direction, they're not going in the same direction. Uh, friction gear or friction uh, uh, friction gear systems are uh, pretty much self-explanatory. They can go backwards. All they do is they're touching each other at, at all times so that they can move. Whereas there is no threading, no teeth. They're not serrated. Uh, just like the chain sprocket, the belt and pulley system. Again, the inside pulleys all go in the same direction. The outside one goes the opposite direction. Is it reversible? Yes. Um, this we're not going to cover, so this is to, to talk about bicycles. Now I'm going to uh, uh, stop here. I'll show you a little video.